a cozy day here in the South. I've been a little bit spoiled because I've seen people on the internet in snow, you know, in their skull caps, and I, I look at them, I'm like, what world is that where it's so cold? And then I wake up today, and even the South sends me back to reality because winter has arrived. Well, anyway, fall has, but a little bit chilly today. So we are going to have a good talk today. We're going to talk about training children to use their discernment and their skills of observation, as well as implementing writing and grammar, because I really think that stuff's important in early childhood. And then we're going to talk about an attack that I've been under, that we've been under for the last week. And that's all right, because iron sharpens iron, and these things, they actually make us stronger in the long run. And it's better that these things happen now than they happen later on when, you know, there's more to deal with. So an attack that we've been under and then our plans moving forward. Hey, Foster Bear. So with that being said, I am. Yeah, it's been a crazy week, Foster Bear. It's been pretty. Uh, we've been under attack. And um, but that's all right. I, let's just say I have some of my best bears on the case. So you guys know how that goes. You know, I, I roll in pretty cool circles, and they're very, very capable deltas all around me. So anyway, yeah, but iron sharpens iron. But I'll get into that, and um, and then I want to talk about what we're planning moving forward and um, some really big stuff. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll break it down. So, all right, here we go. Let's grab TikTok. Three, two, one. Good morning, TikTok. We are here, and it is an absolutely beautiful day here in the sunny south, although the sun might just be a little bit further away today than it typically is, but that's okay because I'm from New York, and I like a little bit of cold weather. I think I was starting to miss it. Wakes you up in the morning, makes you feel alive. So let's talk about teaching children discernment. And for anyone that has followed my page, you know, I talk a lot about Science and the scientific method. Well, really, we're going to talk about teaching children discernment, incorporating English language arts and how to teach your children the skills of writing, the attack that I myself and my community have been under for the last week, which is um, pretty, pretty remarkable. Our response to the attack, uh, we thought we beat it, but now we're back at it again. Our response to the attack and then what we have planned going forward. So, some pretty big topics here today, but let's start with science. And as you know, I talk a lot about the scientific method. And I think it's very important that you establish a relationship between children and the scientific method early in their life so that they know it's a process and they have the discernment or they develop the discernment to question authoritative bodies later on. And we've seen this over the last since March of 2020, right? How many people have you come across that are completely and utterly incapable of questioning someone wearing a lab coat? You know, maybe their, their name rhymes with wants to give you an ouchie, right? And I think a large part of that is because when children are very young, they are taught authoritative science that if someone in a lab coat says something is true, then it must be true. And, and that's why when I did my post this morning, I said, we need less lecturing, less telling children how the world works and more allowing them to discover it. Science should be about discovery. You think about Leonardo da Vinci when he's a young man and he's cutting apart dead birds and he's studying how much their, their bones weigh, right? The dimensions of their feathers because he observed, he had the observational confidence. That's a good phrase, observational confidence. Melissa, can you text me observational confidence? I love that. He had the observational confidence in his own discernment to say, you know what? If a bird could fly, then I can, right? So we want our children sharpening those skills of discernment, right? We want them practicing making observations, and learning about and discovering the world for themselves. And 
So far, we've done a lot of that with the scientific method, right? And you can do this with really simple experiments. Like if you want to do apple oxidation, for example, you get an apple, you cut it up into eight slices. You have um, one slice dipped in lemon, one slice dipped in orange juice, vinegar, oil, you know, whatever you want, doesn't matter. And then you put one on the side dipped in nothing. And the apple slice on the side is your control group, right? So you're showing them how to set up scientific controls. You, you have them make a hypothesis. What do you think is going to happen to the apples dipped in lemon versus the scientific control, right? Um, and then they let a few hours go by, they make their observations, and then they could start to read about oxidation and what happens when um, oxygen, when flesh is exposed to oxygen, right? So you're having them do the scientific method. And of course, we have them identify the independent and dependent variables. And you can do this with a million different experiments. It's not overly complicated to set these up. But today, I unrolled a new plan, a new um, sequence that we're also going to get the children on. And it's going to focus on observational confidence. It's going to focus on developing the confidence in our children for them to know that they can go and discover the world. They don't have to be lectured. They don't have to be told. They can just do it. And I got the idea when I was, um, I was in the forest with my son the other day and we were in the forest and we came across, um, some pretty big paw prints, which, um, could be rather alarming in my part of the world. We came across some pretty big paw prints and we sat down. I started asking him about the prints and I asked him if we should document the paw prints and he thought it was a good idea. So we took out a camera and we took a photograph and then I asked him if we should document the size, right? So you have him put his hand next to the paw print, take a photograph. And then we tried to track the paw prints. We went on to the internet animal paw prints and we tried to match the print much younger with that outfit it's not the 10 years younger <laughs> second we can't take educational advice from this guy he's 12 years old i know i shaved i look a lot younger but that's okay it's going with the new i'm going to shave for a little bit and i've uh, i've had facial hair for probably four years and i i just needed a change up so here I am. And, uh, you know, it's a little, it's a little questionable. I, you know, it's not the most masculine thing of me, but it is what it is. I'm honest about it. So anyway, so we, um, we looked up which animal, we looked up different animal prints and we determined that it was a forest cat, which thank you, Foster Bear. We determined it was a forest cat, which could be a little concerning, you know, <laughs> again, in my part, my neck of the woods, that could be a little concerning, but we said, Hey, heck with it. Let's go track it. So we tracked it through the woods as far as we could until we lost the prints. And, uh, we had a really great day and it really lit a fire under me for the new series that I've been wanting to do. So I took my son and mine experience, my son and my experience and I made it into a lesson plan. So your children are going to go on a nature walk. Yeah, big cats are, are no joke, right? I, we don't have like mountain lions, but we have, I mean, it's not nearly as scary, but we have bobcats and things of that nature. And then we have, um, we have bears, a lot of bears in my area. So, but you know, they, the bears see me and they're like, hey, brother, how are you? And I'm like, brother bear, good, you know, and then we go and harass some bumblebees and get some honey. So, you know, I'm not that worried about a bear. So I am a bear. See by my hat, I'm a bear. <sighs> For those of you that don't know, it's um, an inside joke. I'm a member of a community that we refer to ourselves as the bears. We are the bear community. And for anyone not familiar with them, we are the, um, a very moral community that takes a lot of personal responsibility, um, a lot of extreme personal responsibility. It's um, a great community. For example, I went to a, 
a, a bear event and there were hundreds and hundreds of people there, possibly a thousand people. I don't know, but not one person was drinking alcohol. Right. And this was a, a three day event. I gave a speech at it and everyone's there and just hanging out and having a good time. And it, it was like being at Woodstock with no degeneracy. Right. So I come from a very moral group, a lot of homesteaders, a lot of homeschoolers. And, um, it's really an honor of my life to be a member of the bear community. And, um, I try to carry myself in a way that communicates to the outside world, what that community is about. Right. Right. With my fancy pants car. Right? It's just embarrassing. I had a fancy pants car and, um, and Nicole thought that was particularly funny. Cause even in my days before I woke up, like I was like, before I like be had my spiritual awakening and woke up to all the horrors of the world, like I was materialistic in about like feeling like I liked the feeling of materialism in that, like I would want to get drunk all the time and like, dude, I was drunk all the time. Um, I would go out to the bars. Everything was about having fun. I chased girls. I, I did a lot of, um, promiscuous activity, right? Um, my college years, right? But like, I was never into, even then I was never into like that type of materialism. Like I always kind of thought like, I'd look at people who were like, oh, I have a nice car. And I'd be like, oh, oh good for you, bro. <laughs> I was just never into that type of stuff. So like when I went to uh, Missouri and they gave me a rental car and I was talking to the guy at the checkout desk and he goes, he goes, I gave you the upgrade. And I didn't know what that means. I was like, thanks. And then I get to the car and he gave me a, a little red sports car. And to me, this was a worst case scenario. This was, um, this was a worst case scenario. And then not only is that like not my vibe at all, and it's never been my vibe, but I was going to a place of all these people I respect, like these really serious people, you know, homesteaders, very spiritual people, very connected to God. And like for me to show up in just materialism is like, ugh, you know, that's anyway, it was highly embarrassing. And I parked the car as far away from the event as I could. In fact, there is picture evidence to document this, how far away I parked. I was the, f I, there was a one car parked further away from me and I just walked. I walked there. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't be seen driving in, in this abomination of materialism. And, um, for those of you that don't know what I'm about, that's, um, that could really explain it in, in a good way because materialism is, the downfall of humanity. People are, they all want to be rich. They all want to keep up with the Joneses. And they, they're so focused on that, that they don't realize how rich they are, that all of these people who hyper-focus on materialism would give up everything they had. If you told them that, okay, well you could keep it, but I'll take your breath away. So how valuable is your breath? Would you, would you give up your breath for $10 million? Would you give up your breath for a hundred million dollars for a billion dollars? What's your price? Right? Materialism. People live outside their means just to keep up, right? They keep up with the Joneses. And that is what we want to teach our children not to do. Um, and, and that's why communities like the Amish are so successful. And, you know, like a lot of people in the outside world will look at them and wave their finger. But when you start, when you reject the materialism, and embrace your spirituality and God who is all around us, ever present and inside each and every one of us, you become very powerful and, um, your life gets very, very good. And God does provide, God does provide. That's true. And the more moral you live, the, the more you see that. And, and that, and that's why there are people who are billionaires, who are completely controlled, who are anxiety ridden, who are miserable. And then there are people who are in prison cells and they're at peace and they're happy. And, and that's the spiritual path. So 
a very powerful thing. So anyway, that was a little side note. But so for the lesson I did, um, we want to teach our children to follow their discernment. And, and by the way, Melissa, thank you for um, letting everyone know homeschools connected classicallearner.com. If you are looking to sign up, you can't right now. And I'll get into that because like I said, we have been under attack all week. I thought we'd be back that attack. Um, all the tech people thought we did. And then voila, we did not. So we are once again under attack and, um, I'm just going to come out and talk about it because I, I, I didn't want to be too presumptuous with it. I just thought we could just handle it. But, um, the reality of the world is when you do base things, you, um, attract the eye of Siron. So that, that's fine, but I'll get into that. So getting back to the discernment lesson, um, so you have your children find, go on a nature walk, find a paw print, um, measure the paw print, record all of their observations, how many toes there are, how big it is, what, what is the length. They could photograph it. They could photograph it next to their hand or next to a ruler to document how big it is. They could sketch the paw print, right, and work on and really have them focus on the details. You could even do a YouTube search and have them watch a video on sketching, right? So have them really work on that skill to become a sketch artist. Um, pretty cool, actually. My my wife's cousin is an NYPD detective, and she works in homicide. And one of the things they've had her do is she's actually done the sketches of the perps. You know, when you see the sketch on TV and pencil, and they're like, this is what we think he looks like. She got that job for a while, which um, she said she laughed about because she's like, I'm not that good at sketching. <laughs> but um, either way, like, that's a cool thing to say you did, right? Like, hey, you know. You know what I did as a job once? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so you have them develop their skills of sketching because um, you want them to develop that skill because maybe one day they'll be a police detective, homicide detective who does sketches, right? Like you never know or whatever, you know, the art stuff. There's so many entrepreneurial things you can do with art. So you have your children watch a video on sketching and sketch the paw print and keep it fun. Um, and then you have them do a little bit of research. So they go on the internet, they look up what animal the print could have come from. If they can match the print, great. You have them do more research and read about that animal. And then after they do that, you have them write a paper or a, a, an investigative summary, right? We don't tell them it's a paper. Have them write an investigative report um, summarizing their findings about their experience, what they observed, their measurements, their research, what they read, what they think it is right? And you have them do it in as much detail as possible. Now, this is where we get language arts mixed in. And I'm going to be doing a lot more with language arts with our kids. In fact, I think you guys have seen that where I started the pre-skills series, where I'm doing a lot of focus now on developing materials. So you can really teach your kids the rules of language and letters make sounds and what are those sounds. And, um, but we, we want to focus a lot on language arts and so you have your children do the writing and if they're young and they're not writing yet, observational confidence, just got your text, Melissa. I love it. Um, you have them do their writing and if they're not able to write yet, that's fine. What you have them do is, um, they dictate what they want you to write. You write it out as, um, clearly as you can. So they can see the letters. Like don't just do chicken scratch, write it out so they can see the letters and, that's how they do it. If they're a little bit older and they're ready to trace it, to trace it, you can write it out and then have them trace what you wrote. And then as they trace it, read it out to them. Or if you want to get really crazy, you don't have to do this, but if you want to go all out, you could have them dictate to you later that night, you could take what they dictated and write it out in dots and then have them trace the dots of a whole sentence, right? Because these are little kids. They're, they're writing at most a couple of sentences at that point. If they're a little bit older and they're ready to write on their own, then you have them write it on their own. Maybe they could do a paragraph. If they want, they could do more. And if they're, the, the beautiful thing about these assignments is you can do the same assignment with a middle school student, right? And a middle, a middle school student, for example, would do this assignment and they would write, you know, they're writing four paragraphs. You know, they're not doing, they're not doing, a little excerpt, they're writing really an investigative report of their findings. 
And then with the middle school students, especially when you go over their writing, because the next part of this assignment is you go over their writing with them, right? Um, Because you want to review their writing line by line. And you want to say, hey, I like what you put here. This was the topic sentence. It told me what this was going to be about. Hey, um, I like this sentence, but it did run on a little bit. Maybe you could have put a period and broke it up into two sentences. Another way you could have done this is with a comma or with semicolons. Um, and then when you get to the body of their writing for like a middle school students, um, you could really go back line by line and say, hey, did this, did what you say here line up with your thesis statement at the end of the first paragraph? And like, what's a thesis statement? Oh, you didn't realize? Yeah, this statement that you put right here was your thesis. And that said, that's supposed to say, tell the reader what you're going to be writing about moving forward. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, it's no big deal if it happened here or didn't happen here. But next time, remember, the end of that first paragraph, you want that thesis, right? Because you want to communicate to the reader, someone who's reading your investigative summary, what you're going to be writing about. And then you want... In the body of your writing, you want everything to be evidence that backs up what you said, right? And then you just go over that line by line. And by doing this, you're actually getting them involved in the process of editing their work. So just like in the way they're studying science, where like the way they learn science is more important than the science they learn. Like we, we've done the scientific method and now we're getting into having them use their observations. And I'm going to do a whole series on this, like out in the world, doing their observations, doing their own investigations, and drawing their own conclusions. And this is going to be the start, because eventually I'm going to take this to the point where they start doing sky gazing. Like, we're going to have them go outside at night and look into the sky, and they're going to observe the sky, hopefully get telescopes. You can get pretty cheap telescopes once we get into that. Um, so this is, I want children growing up observing the world and using their discernment and developing that skill of discernment and observational confidence so that when they get older and people say, this is what the world is, they could say, based on my observational confidence and my discernment, I disagree. And that's important. Um, And then it's the same thing with the writing where they're doing this writing and then you're going over it line by line. It's not so much just about the writing. It's the how you teach it because you're teaching them to get involved in the process of editing their own work. And by getting involved in the editing process, they are thinking about their grammar. They're thinking about their sentence structure. They're thinking about their argument structure, right? Because a lot of like, especially when we get to middle school, we really want to start to teach them not just how to do writing, but how to formulate arguments. Like how do you make a persuasive, logical argument, really a logical argument. Um, And then once we master the art of logical arguments, we can get into the art form of um, the magician style of persuasion, right? The rhetoric and persuasion, which is a powerful skill. So this this is what we're building toward. And it's the how of learning. It's how we learn science. It's how we learn English. And um, anyway, I was really excited to lay this out. And um, this kind of segues nicely, and then I'll talk about what we've been going through. This kind of segues nicely into what we've been building, because... We've built out Homeschools Connected, and it's been phenomenal. And it really just started out with me making a commitment to build educational resources for families. And we have built them out in spades, and because of that, we've grown exponentially. This is our first year, and we've grown exponentially. And now we're taking it to the next level. Discord served a purpose, but I've been on the phone with my handy-dandy bears and their bear paws, And we are working on building out the new platform, which is going to be even more user-friendly. And then once we get the new platform built out, it's going to be much easier for the mothers to navigate, which is important. And this is what I'm really excited about because now I have all the resources, but now I'm going to start putting people on tracks like, or a sequence, like this is your child's age. This is where I want you to start. This is what I want you to do week one, week two, week three, week four, right? Because we really want to start building up these skills where like um, kind of those classical education trivium type skills where we start with the grammar, then we build to the logic, and then we build to the rhetoric type of thing, right? And we're going to be able to do that in spades. And I'm just 
Like, I'm so excited about it because the new platform, hey, baby Geo Rock, um, the new platform is going to be, it's going to be much better. Um, and like for me to, to see the growth in our company, to see where we've come from to now where I'm building out the new platform on the side is really exciting. And um, it's really going to make everything better. Like in terms of getting people on a track or a sequence, organizing the materials so that you as a parent know exactly what to do and when to do it. And then on top of it, I'm going to be able to have all the live courses on there, the pre-recorded courses in a very coherent, um, easy to find way that's sequenced out. So very excited about what we have coming. And um, yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at. So, so for now, and uh, just to update the community on what we've been going through is it's kind of crazy. It goes back to September. So back in September, I um, was notified that we were attacked by people doing fraud. They tried to attack our platform. It got blocked. It was, we were successful with it. Um, but the attack was going on. We had to shut everything down for, I think it was three days at the time. We shut everything down, recertified, um, refortified the castle walls, and then everything was fine. And everything was fine for, from September until last week. And last week it happened again. So again, I recognized it right away because I, I look for this stuff every day. I called, I called all of the relevant parties and we shut down our signup page for a week just to, just uh, the US, it's talking about the US midterm elections on the bottom. I'm not talking about that algorithm. I'm talking about my company being hacked. So <laughs> it's nothing to do with that. Um, so we shut down the signup page again. So for the last week, I haven't allowed anyone to sign up to homeschools connected because I'm making sure we certify the castle walls because we were under attack again. And, and this time they looked more into it, the developers, and they said, okay, this, this isn't a fraud thing. You're being attacked by hackers or like a combination. We're under attack by hackers. Okay. So they said, there's a good chance that it's um, like, it's just targeting you. And I'm like, really? And, and that makes sense to me because the space I'm in, right? There's a lot of people that don't like what I do and what I'm doing. And um, so I said, okay, we're under the attack. So we shut, the, we shut everything down. Yeah, when you're doing something good, the devil will attack you. Exactly. Um, so we shut everything down for a week, certified the castle walls, and then yesterday opened everything back up, good to go. Well, I wake up this morning... And once again, a third attack. They're again trying to hack through, and I was able to see it again. So again, I called up the developers, and I said, shut everything down again. So once again, I've had them shut everything down. So we're taking no new signups, um, and we're currently under the attack of those hackers. And that's what's been going on for the last week. And I know some people would say, oh, don't talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. And it's... Um, you know, what is my value? What is my currency? And my currency is that I'm very honest and forthcoming with my community. And we've been under this attack. It's, um, it's been frustrating and we're, we'll get it under control. Um, just so you know, your information and stuff like that, none of that's at risk. It's not that type of attack. Um, but you know, these people, they do, um, they do something called card testing. So they have like, they get lists of credit cards, not from us, from like outside in the world. They get thousands and thousands of them. And then they just test them on my, on my signup page. And they're trying to see if those cards are active um, so that they could take people's cards, not your cards. Again, not, they don't have the information of my people. It's from outside, um, you know, wherever they get them in the world. Um, it's like black market stuff. Um, and then they find out which cards are active and then they go and they, you know, they run up people's cards on credit card. Again, not yours. They're not getting that information from us. They don't have access to any of your credit cards. 
Um, but that's why they say like, oh, don't talk about these stuff because people won't understand it. They'll get scared. Um, but that's your stuff is all secure. They're getting that information from outside, you know, wherever they get it. But then what happens is because the car testing is going on, um, you have to shut down the page because you can't allow fraud to go on on your page, um, obviously, because it's just morally wrong. And the second part of that is then the payment processors will say, oh, this is a fraud page and they'll shut your whole thing down. Right. So they, they could successfully shut down what you're doing by doing that. And so we've been under this attack and it's been going on for over a week now. So I once again shut down our signup page and I'm taking new, no new members, which is very frustrating, but that's the reality of the world we live in. And there's a lot of bad actors out there. And uh, from what my developers are telling me, there's, they say it's a very strong chance based on how this stuff functions, that this is a personal attack aimed at my company um, for whatever reason. And I, I think based on what I do, we could all see what kind of reason that would be. So we've been under this attack and we are sort of, we are fortifying the castle walls. It's just a hiccup and it is what it is, but it is very frustrating because I haven't been able to take new members in over a week now, except for yesterday. And once again, the members came in because the people love what we do. Like my God, this, this concept that the people might want the honest, educated educator, right? Like there might be a market for that. Well, here I am marching like a hurricane and no amount of grabblers. And they've attacked me in many ways. Like the attacks have been creative to say the least over the last year. Um, I mean, even at one point they got my personal phone number and harassed me. Right. And like, and listen, that stuff's creepy when you're not used to this stuff. Like when you, when you, um, all of a sudden, like your cell phone just keeps ringing and the same person from the undisclosed number calls you for like two straight hours. It's like, you're like, Oh, this is a little scary. They're trying to intimidate you. But like, just for all those forces out there for like, who like want to attend and like all like the really like the salacious stuff people can't have come at me with. Um, I don't care. You're not going to intimidate me. You're not going to back me down. And all of this stuff just makes me stronger and iron sharpens iron. And like, I know for the satanic people out there, they're like, Ooh, look what we're doing to him. We're going to get him. We're going to slander his name. We're going to, we're going to intimidate him in his home. We're going to hack his business, right? Like I know for all like you salacious, like you, you people that follow the devil and you don't understand God and you think like, oh, you're getting him. But the thing is when you follow God, God's allowing it to happen. And if you listen to God's message, he's just telling me, this is where you're weak right now. This is where you have to get stronger. This is where you have to sharpen your sword, sharpen your iron, so that when you're bigger and there's more on the line, you'll be able to handle it. And that's the thing. Iron sharpens iron. So right now, okay, but you just wait. Just wait till you see what's coming, what I got going on in the background, the people I'm working with. And I wouldn't be working with them if this stuff didn't happen because the funny thing is necessity is the mother of invention and the mother of invention is going to push me forward because my creative energy is flowing. My God energy. That's why people that worship Satan, people like the people of the lie, that's why the mainstream media, that's why, um, the establishment, they can't meme, right? That's the joke. Like, Oh, they can't meme. Why? They can't create. They don't have God energy, but God energy pours out of me. I could create, Iron sharpens iron, and these things are going to make us stronger. So for anyone that wants to sign up, if you could be a little patient, I, I have to shut down the sign-up page right now. I can't, allow, I can't allow them to do what they've been trying to do. So unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, the developers are doing what they do. I got the tech people doing, you know, fighting the tech war. And, um, you know, as soon as they're ready, um, I'll open it back up and people can sign up once again. So... It is what it is, and um, hi, I was wondering if charter funds cover your books. I've been wanting them for my kids. Um, I, I have no idea if charter funds cover my books, um, 
but they're they're eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. All of my stuff I price at a level that I don't want to be exclusive. Like I don't want I don't want anyone to ever not be able to get my stuff. You you'd be surprised of the things I do, but I. Um, yeah, it's $12 a book. My homeschool company is $10 a month. And, um, and just wait to where we're going. Like right now we provided a certain amount of value, but all I'm doing is just reinvesting, 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 reinvesting. And the thing is what, what separates me from these other companies is like these other companies are doing like, Oh, we make books, buy these books, buy these books, buy these books. That's not my model. My model is you pay a monthly subscription and I will give you everything. So like you pay for what I've already made, but then on top of it, I'm relentlessly building out even more. And that's, that's just getting started because like right now, for example, I have Pat Daly of the Pat Life podcast putting together a course for young children. That's an introduction to body awareness and healthy living. So now the people that have been members of my community for a year, right? Now they're just getting this course and there's going to be more and more and more of that, of me offering new courses at no additional price. So like we're doing that more and more and more, um, all of the educational resources we build out and wait till we build on, bring on curriculum developers. And, and by the way, that's why I tell people all the time, like people talk about, Oh, I want freedom and I want to win. And like, you, you'll see it a lot. Like you'll see the spirit where like, they're like, okay, so when stuff goes down, like I'm going to boycott PayPal, I'm going to boycott Netflix. And that's great. We need to do that stuff. But if people took that same energy on the same scale and said, I'm going to fund what I believe in. Like even people that don't have children should be funding what I'm doing. And I wish more people understood that. Like, they should be funding what I'm doing. They should be funding the, oh, they should be funding Owen Benjamin and the Bears. They should be funding Tom Burnett. They should be funding um, Andrew Torba and Gab. You fund people who are trying to build systems that could compete, not compete, I don't like that word, parallel systems to the B system. And if you do that, you give those people the resources they need to invest in the infrastructure that freedom is built on. And it's interesting that more people don't understand that. And, um, cause you know, I, the, the signups I get are all homeschool people. And I, don't get me wrong. I probably do have about, um, a good amount of people that just, just sign up for that reason to help fund what I'm doing. But if more people understood that, like pe people just like, if you, if you dropped $5 million on me right now, people, they just, they, they can't imagine what I would have built out in 12 months. And it's like, it doesn't take that much to make the world an incredibly better place, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll build out from the grassroots level using the homeschool parents that sign up. But I wish more people understood that because if they did, um, anyway, good people would be able to do good things. And like, this notion that you want good people, like people, they want good people to do good things without the funds to do it. All of this stuff takes funds. Like think about what I'm talked about today. Like I literally have to have tech guys fighting hackers, <laughs> right? All of this stuff costs money, right? So, you know, but it is what it is. And you know, this, that's the cost of business. I'm not scared. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the territory. And when you, when you do base things in the world, you, you get the eye of Siron and that's, that's how, how it goes. You rock Mr. and Mrs. Classical Learner. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Classical Learner is she's, um, she makes this all possible. Cause like, like last night, for example, I'm a, I'm on the phone with developers and so, and this, this, this wasn't the developers dealing with the hackers. This is other developers building other stuff for us. Um, that's what I mean. Like all of this stuff is like, 
you know, you, you need funds to do these things. So I, I was on the phone last night with um, a developer that I have working on some stuff in the background for two hours from about 12 at night to two in the morning. Um, let, let me rewind that. I was making the lesson plan that I outlined here today from about eight o'clock to 12 at night. Then at 12 at night, I got on the phone with um, a member of the bear community who's helping me with some development stuff. And we were on the phone until about two in the morning. Um, by the way, there, there are some exciting things coming. Like I'm not even, um, yes, my stuff, but some of the stuff the bears are doing, like <laughs> the, it's getting really interesting. I, I can't talk about it yet, but like, I do get the inside baseball on these things. And it's like, you guys are going to be excited about some stuff coming down, coming down the line here. But, um, the, the bears crush. So anyway, so I'm on the phone with the developer from 12 to two in the morning um, and, and he, he's more than a developer. He's really at this point become my go-to advisor. Um, someone that I have immense respect for someone who has tremendous experience and knowledge doing business in a variety of different fields, by the way, someone who dropped out of high school and me as a business owner, I don't care about that at all. And let that be a lesson to you. Um, when we think about how we raise our children, right? Like, teach our children to develop skills and to provide value. And then they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll be fine in this world. Like, I don't care that this guy dropped out of high school. He is smarter than I am. He is more experienced than I am. And he is moral in spades. And because of that, he's the guy I want to work with. And now I'm working with him from the grassroots level, but I'm, I'm going to, you know, take him with me, so to speak. So right now my company's at this level, but as we get bigger and bigger, he's, you know, I'm not giving this guy up. This guy's the man, this guy. So think about the value of that, right? Think about, um, you know, the lesson in that too, about raising our children to have those skills and teaching them that they could provide value, that they don't have to send in resumes or whatnot that like read how to win friends and influence people and you network and make connections and show your value. Um, you do things for free for people. Like one of the most valuable things you could do in the world that foster bear knows this and Melissa knows this and they've done free things for me. And, um, the thing is when you do that as companies grow, they want to take you with them. And I do want to take you guys with me and, um, uh, I appreciate, I hope you're patient and, um, I'm able to get us to where I know we're going, but, um, these are, this is how you provide value in the world. And that value comes back tenfold. And, um, so these are the things we're working on. Um, but yeah, so that's the guy I want to work with. Like that's the man. And so I was on the phone with him until two in the morning and, um, and then from Morning. I made that video from two to three in the morning. Another video that I'm going to post on the at real Brett Pike channel. Um, and I wound up going to bed at about three 15 in the morning. And then the moral of that story is, well, the kids are going to be up at six, right? <laughs> so it's like, people are like, wow, Brett's crushing. He's doing all these creative things. Look at him. He's building, he's fighting hackers. Right. But yeah, but that's only possible because Nicole crushes and she was up late too, but she was up at six in the morning with the kids, right? So like all of, I can't do all of that creative stuff and pour in all that creative energy if, if my wife wasn't the absolute legend that she is. And she's my backbone. She's the wind behind me. And I'm very grateful for my wife. And um, I hope she knows that, so... And like, that's the thing about too, like being, being married to someone like me, cause I'm a, a very high ambition, very high creative energy, um, very driven at times impulsive, um, you know, mix my life between going to bed at four in the morning and waking up at four in the morning, right? Like Nicole will tell you like half the weeks I, I'm up until three or four in the morning and then. And then the next week, um, right. The next week I'm going to sleep at, th or let me say this. 
Half the time I'm I'm staying up until three or four in the morning working on whatever I'm working on, like a maestro, like, you know, like crazy creative energy pouring out of me. And then the next week I'm waking up. I'm going to bed early and I'm waking up at, at two or three in the morning, right? Like Melissa probably laughed because she texted me really early, um, I think last week, and she texted me. I was like, oh, no, I've been up for an hour. <laughs> I'm working on stuff here, you know? Um, so, like... What I do isn't possible without Nicole, right? Nicole, like everything I build out, everything that I offer to our community is only possible because Nicole. And, and then on top of that, on top of that, she still puts in the time to where she works on lesson plans and she does creative stuff like that. And I'm very grateful for that. And then like earlier this week, because I'm like, I'm so crazed and driven sometimes she gave me a lesson plan and there were a lot of typos on it. And like, I got mad at her and I'm like, looking back, I was like, Brett, you were such a douche to Nicole. And you know, but like, and I, and I have that retrospect. I'm not a perfect husband, but I do consider myself a very good husband and a very good father. Um, but, um, but yeah, like that's, that's the life we live and I'm not a perfect person. And Nicole, um, she's what makes that all possible. And I'm just very thankful for my wife. And, um, so like, you know, I, I might be the outward face and people see what I do, but just, I hope everyone knows like she's that and she's, um, you know, people should see that. And that, and that's why like, and people used to know this was true. And because of feminism and whatnot, people are like, what are you talking about? They're like behind every great man is a great woman or an even greater woman. And people are like, oh, no, what, what does that mean? No, it, it, is, it is literally true. It is, right, behind every great man, like people like Owen Benjamin. You think Owen Benjamin could do what he does with those four boys without Amy absolutely crushing? Like, Amy crushes. Think about, like, the amount of time he puts in streaming, the amount of time... He puts in um, working the homestead, working the animals, the amount of um, time and energy. Like when he does those streams, right? You have to do the research for those streams. You have to organize those streams. Then he's on the stream for three hours. Then later he's on the stream again for another two hours. Like that's none of that's possible without Amy. And like I know that because I see it in my own life. I actually laugh. Because I have a unique perspective a lot of the times when he talks about his experience and, like, the personal things he's going through. I Even the dynamic of, like, when he talked about the dynamic of him and Amy, how, like, he talked about how he wants to be respected and he wants to be able to work. That's what he, that's what makes him happy. That's what he wants. He wants to be respected and he wants to be able to work. And... Amy wants to be empowered to be a mom, but she wants to have time that she could decompress to herself and that she could be an actual person. And I heard him talk about that recently, and that resonated with me because I know that what I want is to be respected and to be able to work, and what my wife wants and what my wife needs is time to decompress and to actually be a person because a mother has such an overwhelming responsibility where like, especially when you have a baby that's nursing where Aubrey is on Nicole like 24 seven and they're up at six in the morning. A lot of times Aubrey's still up late at night until like 10 at night. She's all over Nicole. She never gets a break. She's homeschooling the two children there. Um, you know, she's dealing with all of this. And if you deal with that so much on and on and on, you you never get to be like that individual that, right? Like that, just be a person to go and do something creative, to go and, um, go and work out, go and get your nails done, go, go on a jog, right? Like, um, you know, go take a shower and stand there for an hour and a half. Like, right. All these things that like the little things that, for me as a husband, I have to make sure that 
I do as good a job as possible. I do a better job at making sure that I give her the time to have those moments, right? Like, and I try to do that. Like yesterday, not yesterday, uh, two days ago, I, I tried to make it a point where I took the children from, I took them and I just left the house and we left from one o'clock and I got them home at seven at night. Um, and I, I, I was really wanted to do that. Um, cause I wanted Nicole to just have that for have a day. Um, so I took them till about seven at night and my plan was to get them back to the house sleeping. I tried to get them to sleep in the car, but it wasn't happening. So anyway, I got them back to the house, but like, so when Owen talks about that with Amy, a lot of people are probably like, Oh, what's he talking about? But like, no, I, I know exactly what he's talking about. I like, cause I, I live a very similar life to him in that way. I, I run a company, um, I have a, I had to spend a tremendous amount of time making TikTok videos, Instagram videos. Now I, um, do the YouTube videos, which I mean, you talk about, um, a 15 minute YouTube video. I have to go, I have to set up the filming. I have to film that, which doesn't take 15 minutes. Cause I, I do takes, I don't like it. I, I sound like an idiot. So I delete it and then I, I do it again until it sounds right. Um, so I do that. Then you have a, a 15 minute or you guys get a 15 minute video, but it's probably like 20 minutes or 22 minutes of me talking. Then I have to go back. I have to watch the 22 minute video. I have to edit it. Um, which means I have to watch the whole 22 minute video, but it's with edits. So it probably takes about 45 minutes to an hour to edit that 22 minute video. Um, right. Then I have to post it online. I have to make the thumbnail. Um, I, right. Then it gets posted and I have to post it to the different social media sites to promote it. Right. And, and that goes with all of these things. Like the, the 30 second TikTok videos I make, I have to do the research of what I want to do for the video. I have to organize the video. I have to shoot the video. I have to edit the video, um, post the video to a variety of different places. And all of this stuff takes time. Then I'm doing live streams. Like today I'm doing a live stream. You know, I, you're live streaming for two hours. That takes time. Um, I make the lesson plans every day. So every night from about the, t here's what I've been doing. So I put Brady to bed. So I lay in bed with Brady. I read him. We've been reading um, the Magic Treehouse series, which I highly recommend. Um, I know there's some stuff in there that people like, grabbled messages or whatnot, but I, I don't think the author means it. I think she believes it. And, um, it's fine. Like I, I, you know, it's, you just, you talk around, you know, read around, but you don't want to read. So uh, we've been reading the magic tree house and we lay down, um, we read. And then once we finish reading that, I tell him daddy has to do reading. I put on my headphones and I listen to, um, audio books and I listen to audio books as he falls asleep. Then, um, as he falls asleep, as soon as he goes down, I pop out of bed, I do a 10 minute stretch and I do four sets of push ups, sit ups and squats. Um, and that takes me about 20 minutes. Um, and then whatever time that is that I'm done, whether that be eight, eight 30, nine, nine 15, depending on the day. Whatever time that is that I'm done, I go downstairs and I immediately start making the lesson plan for the next day. Um, I make the lesson plan, which I'm usually done with sometime between 12 at night and one in the morning. I get the lesson plan posted. Well, actually I have to, tra I have to download the lesson plan, transfer it to a PowerPoint, save it as a PDF, take the PDF, upload it into a Google drive. Then it's in the Google drive. And that's usually about one in the morning. Then I go into the other room. I take out my filming equipment, my lighting equipment, and I start filming the TikTok for the next day. And I'm done with that at about three something in the morning. Um, and then I wake up and um, I wake up in the morning. I post the videos and I, I start to cycle over again, make the YouTube videos and whatnot. Um, so th that's my schedule. So without Nicole, I mean, none of that is even remotely possible, right? Um, and anyway, I, that's just a little bit of insight into my life. And, um, I, you know, I do these streams at this point for the community. Like 
Um, for a while, I was doing the streams every day, and as part of that, I was really trying to recruit new members. But now I'm just using my TikToks, Instagrams, and YouTubes, and, and word of mouth. Like, guys, get out there and tell people what we're about. Like, it goes a long way. Like, you know, if you, if you guys were able to sign up one person a week from word of mouth, think about how powerful that is, right? That's four people a month from just you, right? And then times 12, right? Imagine you got 48 people signed up over the course of a year. Like word of mouth is very powerful. So definitely get out there with that. Um, but yeah, so I just do these talks on, on Friday for the community. And, and that's why I wanted to get on. I wanted to get on here, talk a little bit about education and what you should be doing as parents. Um, to, yeah, Foster Bear, I really appreciate your comments too. I always see you make the comments under my post on Bertaria about, you know, how it's a really good program and that goes a long way, like that type of social proof. So I really appreciate that. And, um, yeah, so I just like to get on here on Fridays now, have a community chat, talk about stuff you could do to educate the children, um, what we're doing moving forward. Thank you, Phoenix. Um, what we're doing moving forward and uh, ha had a great talk, um, the other day as well with you on the podcast, um, what we're doing moving forward and, um, what we've just been going through and talk about life. And like, for me, the stuff I talked about today, this, this honestly is very therapeutic for me, this stuff doing this very therapeutic. Um, and, and I, I also, I come up with a lot of ideas doing this stream. Like, um, the idea Melissa texted me before, um, observational confidence, right? Like when I talk these things out with you guys, I come up with a lot of creative ideas. Um, so I appreciate that. But just to talk about what we're doing, where we're going and, um, you know, and just to build the community. So that's what we've been going through. So anyway, I'm going to call it a stream on that for anyone interested in what I do www.classicallearner.com um, Homeschools Connected It is $10 a month with the discount code FREEDOM um, All lowercase, no spaces You can't sign up right now because The castle walls Are being secured as we are currently under An attack <sighs> It's very frustrating, but it is what it is um, It's good to have great people Behind you, whenever I created My career, I didn't have a lot of support um, yeah, Matt, Matthew's an absolute legend. And I, I remember Matthew, when I first came across you months and months back and you offered to build some type of, um, email platform for me. Um, and you offered to do that just out of the goodness of your heart. So Matthew's another person who's an absolute legend. I wound up not going with it at the time. I just, it was too much for me at the moment, but, um, that's exactly the type of spirit that, builds the future we want and Matthew's an absolute legend and um Matt I'll um I uh if you ever want to do something like that I'll I'll inbox you when I'm ready um and see what we can do cuz that's awesome. I have someone doing the the email stuff right now in the background setting that up but absolute legend. So classicalender.com homeschools connected and um I will be back next Friday for another community stream. Check out the Homeschools Connected YouTube page. Like, comment, share, and watch time. That's how we pump the algorithm. It's a new channel. So the more likes, comments, um, shares, and watch time we get, the more it gets pushed out to random people through the algorithm. That's what we need. Share the links. Tell your friends about me. All right, guys. And I'm going to pretend to drink something for 10 seconds in honor of Melissa. Melissa.